Hello and welcome to our channel. Today, we're going to be working on patient safety and infection control, and how you can prepare for this critical topic for your NCLEX art and examination. This video will provide you with practice questions, answers, and a thorough explanation of why each option is either right or wrong. The goal is to help you understand the concepts of patient safety and infection control and give you the confidence you need to ace your NCLEX art and exam. The importance of patient safety and infection control cannot be overstated. And it is essential to ensure that all healthcare professionals have a solid understanding of these topics. So grab a pen and paper, and let's get started. At any point you find yourself feeling confused or unsure, I invite you to take advantage of our free NCLEX R and Fast Track practice course. The link to this course is available in the description below, and you'll be well on your way to successfully passing the NCLEX R and exam. So be sure to like, share, and subscribe to our channel, and let's get started. An elderly patient with a history of falls and a recent stroke has been admitted to the hospital. What are some safety considerations that the nurse should take when caring for this patient? Your options are A. Place the patient in a low-sided crib with rails fully elevated B. Clear any obstacles in the room and clean up spills and trash from all walkways. C. Provide the patient with a hearing aid and visual aid. D. Document and support the patient's use of medicine pumps and feeding tubes. The correct answer is B. A. The correct approach for fall prevention for an elderly patient is to clear any obstacles in the room and clean up spills and trash from all walkways, not to place the patient in a low-sided crib. B. This option is correct. The nurse should clear any obstacles in the room and clean up spills and trash from all walkways in order to prevent falls. C. Providing the patient with a hearing aid and visual aid may improve the patient's quality of life but it does not directly address the risk of falls. D. Documenting and supporting the patient's use of medicine pumps and feeding tubes is important, but does not directly address the risk of falls. What is the primary role of a nurse in promoting patient safety? A. Monitoring patient-specific risk factors. B. Maintaining hygiene and sanitation in the hospital environment. C. Administering medication to patients. D. Performing surgical procedures. Answer is A, or monitoring patient-specific risk factors. The primary role of a nurse in promoting patient safety is to monitor patient-specific risk factors. Nurses are key players in the prevention of hazards to patient care, including infection, accidents, injuries, and medical errors. When a patient is admitted, the nurse must immediately identify any patient-specific risk factors that may increase the chances of error. Developmental factors, as well as a patient's lifestyle and knowledge of safety precautions, will factor into this assessment. Option B, maintaining hygiene and sanitation in the hospital environment is important for infection control, but is not the primary role of a nurse in promoting patient safety. Option C, administering medication to patients is part of a nurse's responsibilities, but it is not the primary role in promoting patient safety. Option D, performing surgical procedures is not a role of a nurse, but of a surgeon. What is the most important step in promoting safety for infants? Your options are A. Proper car seat placement or strapping B. Child-proofing homes C. Safe sleep practices D. Monitoring infants closely
Right answer is a proper car seat placement or strapping. The most important step in promoting safety for infants is proper car seat placement slash strapping. According to the American Academy of Pediatrics, infants should stay in a rear-facing car seat until age two. Proper car seat placement or strapping ensures the safety of the infant in case of an accident or emergency. Option B, child-proofing homes, is also important in promoting safety for infants. However, it is not as crucial as proper car seat placement as infants spend a significant amount of time in their car seats while being transported. Option C, safe sleep practices, is also crucial in promoting safety for infants. Safe sleep practices help prevent sudden infant death syndrome and other sleep-related deaths. A nurse is working in a hospital and is assigned to care for a patient who has just received internal radiation therapy for the treatment of prostate cancer. The nurse is aware of the potential risks of radiation exposure and takes the necessary precautions to protect himself and others. What is the nurse's responsibility regarding internal radiation therapy in a hospital setting? Your options are A. Limit visitors to the patient and avoid close contact with pregnant women and children. B. Wear personal protective equipment. PPE at all times when caring for the patient. C. Report the patient's condition to the state's credentialing board. D. Document the patient's condition in the medical record. The right answer is A. Limit visitors to the patient and avoid close contact with pregnant women and children. A. Limit visitors to the patient and avoid close contact with pregnant women and children is the right answer. The nurse should educate patients undergoing internal radiation therapy about limiting visitors and avoiding close contact with pregnant women and children until the implants are removed. The effects of radiation will slowly dissipate over a few weeks to months and after the removal of the implants, the patient will no longer emit radiation. B. Wear personal protective equipment. PPE at all times when caring for the patient is wrong because PPE is not necessary for internal radiation therapy. However, the nurse should follow the standard precautions of OSHA and CDC recommendations, which include the use of PPE in every patient encounter, especially in emergency or disaster response. C. Report the patient's condition to the state's credentialing board is wrong because the state's credentialing board is not responsible for reporting patient conditions. Incident reporting is the responsibility of nursing staff, and common incidents to report include near misses, medication error, substance abuse, improper care, staffing practices, and other treatment errors. The overall goal of incident reporting is to prevent further injury and repetition of the event in the future. D. Document the patient's condition in the medical record is wrong because copies of the incident report are never included in the medical record. However, the nurse should still document the simple facts of an incident in the patient's chart. A nurse is working at a hospital and has noticed that one of the other healthcare staff members is not wearing gloves when handling biohazardous material. The nurse is unsure of what to do, but wants to ensure the safety of all patients and staff members. What should the nurse do in this situation? Your options are A. Ignore the situation and continue with their own responsibilities. B. Confront the healthcare staff member and tell him to wear gloves. C. Report the situation to the appropriate overseeing agency at the facility. D. Document the situation in the patient's chart. Right answer. B. Confront the healthcare staff member and tell him to wear gloves. Let's see the explanation. A. Ignoring the situation is not appropriate as it does not ensure the safety of patients and staff. 
B. Confronting the healthcare staff member and reminding them to wear gloves is the best course of action as it directly addresses the issue and helps ensure the safety of everyone involved. C. Reporting the situation to the appropriate overseeing agency is important, but it should be done after the immediate danger has been addressed. D. Documenting the situation in the patient's chart is important for documentation purposes, but it should not take priority over addressing the immediate danger of not wearing gloves when handling biohazardous material. OS 8 or regulations require that healthcare workers take proper precautions when handling hazardous materials. Wearing gloves is an important aspect of standard precautions as it helps prevent the spread of bloodborne pathogens. By confronting the healthcare staff member, the nurse is taking an active role in ensuring the safety of all patients and staff members, which is a key responsibility for all nurses. Additionally, it is important for incidents of unsafe practice to be reported, but it should not take precedence over directly addressing the situation in the moment. A nurse is working in a hospital and notices that a fellow healthcare worker is not properly disposing of a sharps material. What is the nurse's responsibility in this situation? Your options are A. Ignore the situation and not report it. B. Confront the healthcare worker and educate them on proper sharps disposal. C. Report the situation to the hospital administration but not the state's credentialing board. D. Report the situation to both the hospital administration and the state's credentialing board. The correct answer is D or report the situation to both the hospital administration and the state's credentialing board. According to the Nevastic Safety and Prevention Act, it is the nurse's responsibility to report unsafe practices of other healthcare personnel to the appropriate overseeing agency, both at the nurse's individual facility and to the state's credentialing board. The goal of reporting is to prevent further harm and repetition of incidents in the future. Confronting the healthcare worker and educating them on proper sharps disposal is important, but it does not fulfill the nurse's obligation to report the situation. Reporting only to the hospital administration does not meet the requirement to report to both the facility and the state's credentialing board. A patient is brought into the emergency room with a severe laceration on their arm. The patient is conscious and alert, but is in significant pain. The nurse must perform a triage exam to assess the patient's condition and prioritize their care. What should be the first step in the triage exam for this patient? A. Obtain a blood pressure. B. Assess the patient's neurological status. C. Ensure the patient's airway is clear and open. D. Look for signs of significant wounds or injuries. Right answer. C. Ensure the patient's airway is clear and open. A. Obtaining a blood pressure is important, but it is not the most pressing concern in this scenario. The patient's airway should be the first priority as it is essential to their ability to breathe and maintain consciousness. B. Assessing the patient's neurological status is important, but it should be done after the airway has been secured. C. Ensuring the patient's airway is clear and open is the most critical step in the trage exam. If the patient is not able to breathe properly, their condition could deteriorate quickly. D. Looking for signs of significant wounds or injuries is important, but it should be done after the airway has been secured. The priority in this scenario is ensuring the patient can breathe properly. Let's see the theoretical reasons. According to the American Heart Association, the airway is the most important aspect of a trage exam as it is essential to the patient's ability to breathe and maintain consciousness. If the patient is not able to breathe properly, their condition could deteriorate quickly, 
making it essential for the nurse to secure the airway first. Other aspects of the TRAGE exam, such as obtaining a blood pressure and assessing the patient's neurological status, can be done once the airway has been secured. A patient has been admitted to the hospital with symptoms of a respiratory illness. The patient has a fever, cough, and difficulty breathing. The patient is coughing up mucus and has a runny nose. What precautions should the nurse take when caring for this patient? Your options are A. Standard precautions B. Contact precautions C. Droplet precautions D. Airborne precautions The correct answer is C, or droplet precautions. The patient has symptoms of a respiratory illness and is coughing up mucus, which makes it likely that they are contagious. Therefore, the nurse should take droplet precautions, which require the use of a gown, gloves, and mask. 